In this video, we're going to look at getting XUnit set up to run our unit tests in Visual Studio. So we're going to be starting with a new project, looking at the things that you need to add, and then walking through a couple of scenarios so that you can understand how to get unit tests set up to run right in Visual Studio. So with that said, let's waste no time and jump right over to Visual Studio. All right, so I'm here in Visual Studio and all that I've done is created a brand new class library project. And just to prove that to you, if I go jump over here and we go look at the actual project file, we can see what it looks like here. Nothing fancy. I haven't gotten added anything yet. This is truly just an empty class project. It even has this class one file that it dropped in for us automatically from the template. So we are starting right from scratch. Just to explain what we're going to be trying to accomplish, if you look on the right side of my window here, I do have this text explorer panel and we want our tests to show up here so that we can just go ahead and press the run button and have them all run. Of course, at this point in time, we have absolutely no tests. So let's figure out how we can get X units set up. And then from there, I'll label a couple of tests for us to go run and we'll see them show up in this test explorer. So the first thing we'll need to do is actually go to the NuGet package manager. So I'm just going to go ahead and right click on the project, go to manage NuGet packages, and it will bring up this other window for us to go look at where we can install packages. I'm going to go over to the browse tab, and this is where we're going to be able to look for the XUnit package that we want to work with. So we're going to search for XUnit right in here. Pick the one right at the top that currently has 340 million downloads. For me, it's going to be version 2.5.0, and we'll go press install. You may have a prompt that comes up that asks you to preview the changes and just press OK to that and the dialogues that follow. And from there, we have XUnit installed. So the cool thing now is if we go back to our class, if this is where we're going to be writing our tests, we can actually go label a test and have it show up in our runner. In XUnit, we use the word fact to label a test. And if I add the using statement, we'll have it come up here. You can use private, you can use public. I generally stick with private, and then you would name your test whatever you'd like. The naming convention that I usually use, and you can kind of do whatever you would like, is that I like to have the method that's being tested, something about the scenario that follows in the next part after the underscore, and then the last part is that something about the expectation that I have at the end. I'm just leaving it with X's for now, but we can come back to this later. Now that we have a test labeled with a fact, we should be able to go to our test explorer and see it show up in the list. And behold, we have it in this nice layout here where it's organized by our namespace, then the class that we're in, and then our test name. So let's go ahead and see what happens when we try to run this. If I go ahead and just ask to run all of the tests, it actually says that it's completed, but if you look closely, it says that there were no tests actually run. So zero passed, zero failed, and zero were skipped, although it did say that it finished. So what's happening here? If we go look at our output panel and then switch it from build over to test, this does give us a little bit of a hint. So it is saying that it looks like there's a bit of an issue with how we're trying to run our tests. So it says that this project does not reference any NuGet adapter. Test discovery or execution might not work for this project. Now, it's a little bit misleading because if we were just looking in our test explorer, it might not be obvious, but there is an error that shows up. So if you are paying close attention, you would have seen this, but I think it's easy for a lot of people to miss. So let's go add what's missing. We actually need to have an X unit runner installed as well. So let's go get that NuGet package. If I go back over to here and I say X unit runner, search for that. We have it right at the top. There's XUnit Runner Visual Studio. We can go ahead and install this now too. Awesome. Okay, so let's go try again to run this now that we have this NuGet package for the XUnit Runner. Again, I will just go run all of these. And the same thing happens. It says we have zero tests that ran, so no pass, fail, or skipped. And again, we have an error. This time it says that it still can't find the test host, but it does have this other uh, warning that's gone away, right? So we don't have this anymore. It just says that it couldn't find the test host. So there's one more thing that we actually have to go install, 
And this is going to be a total of three things, but the last thing that's missing here is that we need the Microsoft Test SDK. So if I go ahead and install this NuGet package as well. Now that I have all three of these installed, if I go back to the Test Explorer, go run all of my tests, you'll see that it's taking a little bit longer. It's discovered a test, and it's actually said that it's finished running a test. If we check our output panel, looks like there's no issues here now. That's the Build tab, but if we go to Tests and we look to the bottom, there's actually no issues at all. So this did in fact go run successfully, but it did require three packages. So let's go have one more quick look at what our project file looks like so we can have the list of all the packages needed. If you're following along on your side and you're trying to get XUnit set up, keep in mind that these are the packages that I had to install just to be able to right click and have tests run inside of Visual Studio. So that is we need XUnit installed, and we will need an XUnit runner for Visual Studio as well. So these are two different XUnit NuGet packages. And then finally, this is the piece that most people miss. I myself miss this all of the time when I'm setting up new test projects. And in fact, even before getting ready for this video to go record it, I couldn't remember what the name of this package was. So I had to go recall it. And these are all three things that you will need to install to have your XUnit test run. I just wanted to make a quick note about the different types of tests that we can have here. And I'm not gonna go into detail, but you can have a fact to label a test. And the other thing that you can have to label a test is called a theory. A theory is going to allow you to pass parameters into your test. And if I say Boolean here, and then you can actually label with attributes where you want that data to come from. Again, I won't go into a ton of detail here. I just want to illustrate quickly that we can go have true and false passed in. And just to show you what this will look like, if I go to the test explorer now and I expand this, you'll see that we now have two tests and it actually shows you printed out the parameters that are passed in. There are more complicated things that you can do aside from inline data because that only takes constant values, but you can actually go generate more data to pass into your theory. Another quick note is that I did label this as a private void and I have theory here. I had fact before, but your test class must be public. So if I go ahead and make this internal because I don't want other assemblies to be able to see this, you'll see that it is flagged already and does give us an, a warning if we check it out. And it does tell us that it needs to be public. So I can leave this as public. We are able to seal these if we'd like. We can still discover them right in our window. So that's just a super quick video to show you how you can get set up with XUnit inside of Visual Studio. And a quick recap is that we need three NuGet packages. One is XUnit, one is the XUnit runner for Visual Studio, and the other one is the Microsoft Testing SDK. So if you forget what they are, you can go back in this video, press pause when it's all shown on screen, and just make sure that you go get those NuGet packages installed. We only touched on a couple of the different variations that we can use with XUnit, so the fact and the theory attributes, and then I quickly showed inline data, but there's so much more we can do to generate test data, and we can look at that in follow-up videos. So thanks for watching. I hope you found this helpful. It's just a quick tip to get you started with XUnit. So thanks, and we'll see you later.